survived day three of driving in LA. They need that flashing applause sign for everybody out there watching. Thanks for hanging out on the Friday, just in time for Brandon Marshall to recap D Hop's debut, which was incredible. I hang out with Derwin James, who faces and loves Geno Smith. You don't want to miss that. We have game previews ahead, and Mark Ingram may join us for a tough conversation. Long flight home. Saints are two and five to start, and this will be filled with beer. deck perfect person to have here of course to preview all the action uh, on Sunday and to recap what went on last night with DeAndre Hopkins but last night a beautiful I mean Al Michaels could not have been more gleeful and joyous celebrating a high scoring Thursday night football situation the Cardinals beating the Saints 42 to 35 that was the score 42 to 30 to 34 I believe that was it. Is that right? Great. That, there we go. You can know what the score was. It was high scoring. That's all you need to know. Fantasy points galore. Back-to-back uh, -back pick sixes at the end of the first half, giving us this beautiful viral moment. Can we take a look? I think we have it. The, uh, the leap, courtesy of, yes, Marco Wilson. What a gorgeous thing. Can we see that again? I missed that the first time around. I've only seen it a million times on on the Twitterverse over there. Yes, it was beautiful. Everybody had their memes and gifts about it. Uh, and it helped fuel the Cardinals to a win. This morning, though, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about Taylor Swift. I haven't listened to it. Your thoughts. Someone in my, our control room, rhymes with Schmoen, um, says that it's not great. So let me know. How was Midnight at Up and Adam show? Uh, this morning, we are going to focus on the reunited and it feels so great situation between DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray. Uh, and we talked about this yesterday. We saw top-tier Kyler Murray when DeAndre Hopkins is there. And lo and behold, the most complete performance of the season from Kyler, out of Kyler, even though he was yelling at Cliff Kingsbury, telling him to calm the F down uh, as the cameras picked up. And we can all read, you know, mouth language here. But this is the first time all year he's posted a passer rating of over 100. And let me tell you, I am always very, and everyone knows I love D-Hop, I am very nervous for players, coaches, whoever, celebrities, putting out too many hype videos. I'm a very undersell, over-deliver, and you are setting the bar so high as we watch DeAndre Hopkins clip after clip after TikTok after, you know, 8 millimeter Scorsese film uh, on black and white, whatever, a film noir on his return and his comeback. I would rather just always show up quietly and pop on the scene and then ball out. And after last night, I was like, uh, I, he didn't do enough. I could have used another highly produced music video because Nuke absolutely delivered. And you can just look at the box score to see how much D-Hop means to Kyler's success, maybe more than any quarterback wide receiver duo in the league. And I mean that. If you check it out, Kyler completed 10, completed 10 passes to DeAndre for 100 the yard, three yards and just two other passes to wide receivers on the day. So despite an incredible effort from an extremely shorthanded Saints team, the Cardinals moved to three and four, and they are right back in the thick of that wild NFC West race, which I likened to Game of Thrones, where somebody's got to win, and it's going to be the team that figures it out first. Robbie Anderson barely got involved. Give him a couple weeks to maybe learn the playbook and feel reinvigorated, and uh, hopefully they make magic happen. And speaking of the NFC West late night bombshell taking the steam right out of Taylor Swift's announcement I think we had the 49ers trading for running back Christian McCaffrey sending back a second rounder in this year's draft along with three other picks that is the news I love it when this stuff happens to see one of the best potentially most explosive highest ceiling players in the NFL go to what I do think is the best possible situation and yes Rams and Bills great they would have been attractive landing spots too but Kyle Shanahan's offense will be built around the run game first I think he goes to Buffalo he's lost in the sauce a little bit with Stephon Diggs and company Rams I don't really trust their offensive line with everything going on this is where he's going to be supported and he's not going to have the opportunity to shine and him and Debo are going to be an absolute nightmare and I cannot wait to talk to Mark Ingram about this and a huge moment, guys, for the Niners. According to Ian Rappaport, last night their main competition in this deal were the Rams. So uh, to beat Sean McVay and Les Snead, Mr. and Mr. F them picks bros uh, at the at their own game and snatching away a superstar talent, such a win within a win. So I think the move drastically shifts the balance of power in the division. And I said it preseason, 
And now this sort of reaffirms it. This is the team in the NFC that I think does go all the way. Take that, Stats. Anybody look at Stats' tweets from last night? Hopefully he was happy about it. So Jimmy Garoppolo, Christian McCaffrey, we'll see what they can do. All right, let's bring in our very good friend, six-time Pro Bowler, founder of the I Am Athlete Media Empire, Brandon Marshall. What's up, what's up, what's up? Hold on, what did you say? Who's going all the way? I think the Niners might represent the NFC this year. In the Super Bowl? Oh, uh, yeah. Case Bowl prediction. What are you? Who do, who, who's their competition? In the NFC? Yeah, I'll wait. Uh, well, you got the you, Eagles. Of course, You're, the Giants, the Eagles. Come on, that's there's two there. Are you over Tom Brady? Are you one of those people that's over Tom Brady? Oh, Tom Brady and the Bucks, they lose to the Steelers. So now they're done. Tom Brady having troubles. They're mm -hmm. done. It's Tom Brady. Do you have, <laughs> if I were to ask you right now which team is representing the NFC in the Super Bowl, you would pick the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Are you, are you serious? No, 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 no. I was doing too much. It's TV. <laughs> can I, can I, can I, can I? It's TV, K. It's TV. No, Who would you I'm going pick? with the Who Eagles. Would you pick? Yeah, yeah, that's the a tough Eagles, one. The Eagles, for sure. The Eagles, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't even, I'll put the Bucks over, I'll put Not the good. Bucks over the Giants, but the Eagles to me are the most complete team in the NFL. A lot of people have the Buffalo Bills up there, and then the Eagles I actually have the Eagles, then uh, the Bills. I mean, but, what, what can't they not do, right? Mm -hmm. On a defensive side, their front seven, they can get to the quarterback. Their, their secondary, are, are they the best in football? You know, Slay, super smart, getting everybody in position. You also have on the, on the offense side, they can run the ball, they can throw the ball. They have, they have two wide receivers that are number ones. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. And they're having fun, and they're not playing selfish football that's the tough part right a lot of times when you're in these type of situations the selfishness can bring a team down they're actually having a lot of fun okay they they are but i could argue all the same things for the niners so that's what i'm saying <laughs> what one Listen. of the best defenses let's be honest and they'll okay, get you okay. and then you add christian mccaffrey to shanahan with debo with kittle kittle who's you know not even 100%. He hasn't really developed chemistry and limited work so far this season. Uh, and you have a quarterback that has been there and done that. And, you know, they obviously haven't gotten the prize that they all wanted to, but they've gotten to a Super Bowl. So I think, I'm, I guess my thing is, I think the Christian McCaffrey news is huge in the balance, not only in the West, but in the NFC. And you disagree. Yeah. You say, I, I yesterday before this trade would have said the Eagles, and now I'm saying the Niners. You don't think that's oh, fair? Wow. No, listen, you, you, you're not, you're you not to say far healthy. off. You're, you're not far off. If you go back to even last year, the last two years, the Niners have started off slow. They haven't looked like great a great team. Then they turn it on. Why did they turn it on? Because of everything you just said. Well, and then two, the two that I want to highlight is the defense and then Coach Shanahan. Yeah. I say this all the time. I got to give him love every time. But he's the reason why I was drafted. Everybody thought I was a tight end. Some people didn't even think I was good enough. And he called Coach Shanahan, the big Shanahan, Mike Shanahan, and said, Dad, you got to take this guy. And they actually had a family argument because <laughs> Coach Mike Shanahan wasn't going to draft me. So I came up in that offense. In that offense, yeah, there's the Rod Smiths. There's the big McCaffrey that was there and there was this there was the Shannon Sharps of the world right. that everybody thought made that offense go but what made that offense go that run game that run game and then the keeper game being able to build the passing game off of that run so Christian McCaffrey obviously super talented been in a tough situation over the last couple years and also banged up if he can stay healthy this is a scary team because he will make that whole thing go that's going to be a scary, 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 scary situation because not only is he really good, but you now have a coach that can scheme big holes. He can scheme you into a situation where you're huh. you're on the, the, the heels of the, the secondary and the linebackers right away. So super excited about this. But, Kay, I have to wait. I can't go out there like you are. You're bolder than I am to go out there and say the 49ers are now the team to beat in the NFC. I just need to, I need, I give, can I, can we get two, three weeks, Kay? Can we, can we revisit this in two to three weeks? We will. 100%. Okay. What is your background today? What are we, what are we, uh, all, we're very serious and grim this, this morning. 
you know, I had some I am athlete graphics up, okay. but it just didn't work out for me. You know, my team, my tech team isn't here. You know, we're a startup, Kate. My tech we're, we're, we're rolling on the skeleton team. <laughs> so my, my graphics was dropping. We had Richard, our producer, in the back telling me, Brandon, you're blurry, you're blurry. So I had to, I had ah. to turn everything off. <laughs> you, you and my producer, Richard, exchanging video messages to each other. Uh, I heard about that story. We'll get to that another day. Listen, <laughs> did you hear what I said about DeAndre Hopkins? And you think I'm being bold. I think he might be the most valuable receiver, maybe the most valuable player after what we saw last night, what we saw last year, what we see out of Kyler with or without him, right. uh, especially over the last two years. Am I crazy? No, I mean, look, you got it right here. Beautiful graphic, gra the numbers don't lie. Um, 10 catches last night. Um, what's significant about that is trust, right? A lot of people thought he was going to be on the pitch count. A lot of people didn't think he was going to impact the game the way he did. And so when a quarterback throws you the ball 14 times, you know what they, that says? They're like Jay Cutler, smoking Jay, smoking Jay. If he believes in you and he trusts you, he's going to you, Always right? Jay Cutler. And, 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 and that just highlights the quarterback wide receiver relationship. When quarterbacks are struggling, which the Cardinals are struggling, when teams are struggling, what does quarterbacks do? They go back to what they're comfortable with. And that's who they're comfortable with, DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins, just three years ago, he was the best wide receiver in football. Remember what he did for this team in a young collar when he was traded for nothing from the Houston Texans to the Arizona Cardinals? So now he misses six games and he steps in and he plays the way he did. He was a safety blanket for Kyler. And like you said, he is the MVP. Right now, if I'm D-Hop, you know what I'm doing? What? Pay me more money. Pay me more money. Oh, I need more money right now, like next week. Like yeah. next week. Look what he just did for Calder Murray. <laughs> he saved the day. He, he was suspended day. six games. It, but listen, you know, hey, when you win games, everybody forget everything. <laughs> See, you, yeah, I don't know. I don't, usually I love your advice. I don't know. I, I, I need D-Hop. You're saying wait a couple weeks on Christian McCaffrey uh, and the Niners. I say let's wait a couple weeks for D-Hop to start barking for more money, especially hey, in no, no, what no, is clearly a mess in that locker room. Be be real for five minutes. Yeah, you, don't, you, don't have to, you, don't have to, you don't have to be loud and... In, in front of everybody, you can just go knock on a general manager's door and be like, hey, you see what's happening now? We're proud. We can potentially win a division. Kay Adams, the only one out there saying that the 49ers are just going to run away with it. <laughs> Listen, with me back, we could easily win this thing. So if you give me five, six more million dollars, I can assure you when, 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 when Kyler is cursing, calm the F down. I'm going to be the one to put my arm on his shoulder every single time and say, young brother, oh, we yeah. okay. I am here. D-Hop is here to save the day. Just follow me. So for that, I'm just going to need another $5 million and we'll be all good. You see how easy that is? <laughs> Steve Keim and Michael Bidwell are watching this like, shut up, shut up, Brandon Marshall. <laughs> right. Don't say that. Uh, he's got a, a contract, I believe, till 2024. DeAndre Hopkins. So we'll see how that goes. But that's your big bro, Brandon Marshall's side of things. And D-Hop knows about money. He knows about branding. He knows about marketing. Uh, and you're calling him the most valuable, let me see, most valuable player in the league or most valuable wide receiver in the league? Most valuable wide receiver. Let's go with that one. All right. I like that. Now, you broke some news. Speaking of wide receivers, on the I Am Athlete podcast, you had d on, and he revealed that he still planned to play this season. He also had this to say when you asked about potential landing spots. I like Lamar Jackson game right now, man. Baltimore. Jackson to Jackson. You know, I hear some boos, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's all love. I, I like to support the young fella. Mm. Okay, so Ravens sign wide receiver Deshaun Jackson. What do you think? Is he going to fit with the Ravens? Yeah, absolutely. Um, D-Jack can still do it. I mean, just last year, he was running by people when he was, he had a little small little run with the Rams. Rams didn't use him the way he thought he should have been used. Um, so that situation didn't work out. He moved on to uh, the, the Vegas Raiders, and he still... Uh, showed his speed. And that's what you need from d -Jack, right? Like, d -Jack is not a wide receiver that's going to come and do it all, right? He is an e he's elite, and he is special when it comes to speed. He's 35, and he can still move. 
right? So that's all he needs is to be able to put pressure on the defenders. He needs to be able to go back to when Hollywood Brown first came into the NFL. I never forget it. The Miami Dolphins game. Okay, and, and and I need to plug in my computer before it cuts <laughs> off on you. But the Miami Dolphins game. Go for it. You got Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown, it, I felt like on the first drive, Jackson dropped back and threw this bomb, and it was a touchdown, right? And it was dynamic. He had 160-something yards on four catches. That's what d can bring to this table. But he hasn't had anyone that he can trust and I had the elite speed and ability to be able to, to, to bring that to the table every single Sunday. Now, a lot of people will look at me and say, Brandon, well, he's old and, you know, can, can he still do it? He's right. washed up. You only need five plays, Kay. That's, That's true. it. Just give me five plays. That's it. And then now I'm good. I'm plugged up. There we go. Where's your tech team? <sighs> man, I need, I need a bigger budget, man. The, 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 the you founder hear that, of this FanDuel? Company, this, FanDuel? This founder of this company, they're just not like... He's not giving me a budget to play with. It's, it's not great. All right. Uh, what did you say? It's going to work out. Your, your, best friend, your best friend Richard's in my ear. He, Richard's saying you're the founder. Oh, me? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Dang. you, you got to cut that check, <laughs> my friend. Maybe, yeah, I cut the check yeah. to myself. You, you got you to gotta do what DeAndre Hopkins, you, what you're telling him to do, knock on your own door and ask yeah, for that $5 million to get yourself a tech well, staff and an art director. Correct, 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 right. Uh, let's wrap up this this DJAC conversation okay. in Baltimore. Baltimore, they could they could they could they could be undefeated right now, right? We're talking about okay. the games that they've lost. It's one, two, maybe three plays. That's it, right? Lamar Jackson is playing exceptional football outside of two or three plays. This team is going to be scary on the back end, on the back stretch, right? A lot of the the, the pros pros say that football season starts the day after Thanksgiving, right? Watch out for this team right around there. d probably won't come in right away and make an impact like a D-hop mm-hmm. uh, uh, did last night, but he will once he gets his feet underneath him and once he hits that mid-season stride, he will be an impactful player and he'll make big plays down the stretch. Now, everybody's talking about the Buffalo Bills yes. and how good they are. Baltimore Ravens, they're serious, okay? And then obviously you have the Chiefs out there, but the Baltimore Ravens, please don't sleep on them. And this is the first time ever, Kay, that we've seen Lamar Jackson get pissed off. Like, look at his press conference this week. Yeah, it was saying, crazy. I'm upset, I'm mad. We've never seen him that way. He's always cool, calm, and collected. It's true. I just want him to get paid. I mean, I think bringing in a, a Deshaun Jackson, like, I don't know what the expectation is for him, but, you know, it just, any move that the Ravens make is just going to add pressure on him and what that contract looks like. So I hope, I hope, I hope for Lamar's sake that the, the Deshaun Jackson, even if it's those five plays, help him get what he wants because we all want to see Lamar Jackson safe, healthy, um, and highly paid. Uh, one quick one before we go. Uh, three game wins. When you wins- say go, you always do this to me. When you say go. Yeah. That means I'm not coming back on the show. We we got listen. We got Derwin James coming up. We got. We, oh, he's bigger than me. All right, ah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You you can't hang out if you if you tell us ahead of time you want to hang out for 40 minutes. We can hang out for 40 minutes. All right, <laughs> go. Next, you always you always say you always say I'll I'll come on for a segment and then you're like wait wait wait, wait, wait more to talk about. I love it. I want you to just come on for as long as you want. But riddle me this, Jets. I'm surprised by it because they're in the in the middle of a three game win streak, right? and everything's are going well. And then we're hearing about Elijah Moore. He's disgruntled, he's not happy. This is a second year wide receiver who's reportedly asked to be moved and asked for a trade. So I ask you what, you know, maybe not what your advice would be to Elijah, but what your advice would be to Zach Wilson and how to handle this, because he is a exciting right. second year quarterback who's making things happen, changing culture, changing with the fans and how they view about this team. But so what would you tell Zach Wilson about all this? Well, you've seen it, you've seen it in the past. Uh, I saw Zach Wilson's presser yesterday. He handled it totally wrong. He should have came out and said that this is my guy and I'm going to find ways to get him the ball. He came out with other excuses that were valid, but you don't say that publicly. Mm. You go to your guy and say, I'm going to find a way. I just spoke to Elijah Moore probably 30 minutes ago, and I told him I support him. I told him I'm in his corner. And a lot of people don't like that. I'm a big Jets fan, and Jets fans are going... 
going to be mad at me. But I told him, as a wide receiver, you get paid to catch the ball. Now, how you go about it, it's a different story, right? But at the end of the day, zero targets, two catches, and mm. and maybe behind the scenes things not going the way they should be going. Uh, you know, th- you need to have those discussions. But I would like for them to keep that internally moving forward. It's well said, Brandon Marshall. Uh, uh, Richard, get out of. Richard is one. Richard, why don't you just do a show with Brandon Marshall? Ian says, not a surprise. Jets coach Robert Sala announces that wide receiver Elijah Moore won't play on Sunday versus the Broncos. B Marsh, this is not how we do business. Right. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, you know, obviously it's heating up there. I don't like this. Yeah. Uh, you should be able to play through this and work through this. But, you know, look, the Jets, they're going to protect this this chemistry they have right now. Maybe a good decision on the Jets. And hopefully Elijah and his team, they get what they need and what they want. It's well said. B Marsh, I am Athlete Podcast. Get yourself that tech team going. And next time we will make plenty of time for you. But then I'm scared I'm going to give you that time. And you're going to say, I got to go. Why do you want me on for half an hour? I'm going to be splitting plates and tip, uh, tap yeah. dancing out here. Some people in this world, you give them whatever they want, Kay. Like, Kay, you're the best. You're the best, too. Talk to you in a bit from, we're going to say in the AFC, from offense, of course, to defense. Derwin James uh, hangs out with me. There's trucks and beeping, and it's not great audio, but he was great as always. Derwin James talks about uh, Brandon. And Staley, does he defend his coach going for it and being so aggressive on fourth? We'll let you know. You know me, I'm going for it anyway. I want to be aggressive oh, anyway, no. too. So I'm an aggressive <laughs> player. And I, as a defender, I'm like, if they don't get it, hey, it gives me an opportunity, sudden change to go make a play. So, you know, we got to go out there anyway. Whether we punt it or not, we're going out there anyway as a defense. Thursday Night Football, Mark Ingram will stop by to talk about this long flight for him, but uh, everybody is talking about that dive. Look at the athleticism. Marco Wilson showing it off. It was a dive into the end zone after his pick six of Andy Dalton. Cardinal saying, frame it, give it to your mom for Christmas, put it on the fridge. We don't care as long as you have it. And then this was memed galore, one of my favorites, me walking away from the drama I just created. All right, Twitter, keep doing your thing. We've got Mark Ingram on the show, Sam Munson. What kind of beer am I drinking today? Golden Road, Oktoberfest. From, where is that from? Los Angeles. Golden Road from Los Angeles. I don't know if Sam Munson is in Ireland or wherever he is. Big discussion uh, in our control room about that yesterday. But right now, uh, I want to show you this uh, sit down that I did. And it, was, it wasn't a sit down. He was very much standing. And it was very much loud. But he's very much smiley and wonderful and always lighthearted. Uh, I love the Chargers. I support them. Derwin James, one of my favorites in his fifth year. He's gone through so much adversity, missed an entire year, but he's been to the Pro Bowl twice, a, uh, an all-pro, the ultimate hype man for everybody on his team, from his kicker to his star-wide receivers and his quarterback, of course, and a guy who, if there was a person to convince me that California is great, it's Derwin James. <gasps> Derwin! What's how good? are you? How are you doing? It's so good to see you! You know what, I just moved to LA, Derwin, and I wake up every morning and I say, how blessed am I? 88 degrees, going in. Do you feel the same way? You play in gorgeous SoFi Stadium, you're healthy, things things are pretty good, no? Yeah, I, I definitely wake up, feels great every morning, every night. You know, uh, that's what you pay for the taxes out here. <laughs> Now, you just beat the Broncos in overtime, so you're happy about that, I'm sure. 19 to 16. Uh, you had a huge sack in that game of Russell Wilson. How satisfying is that as a safety? Uh, it feels good. Anytime you can make a big play, especially playing the game, you know, on defense, trying to get the ball back to the offense. So we can make a pick, a sack, anything to change the game, you know, is always that good feeling. Erwin, what did you do to Russell Wilson that he looked the way he looked in the second, third, and fourth quarter? I feel like as a defense, we kind of locked in and stopped letting people just get wide open because the plays that they hit on us early in the game, it was literally nobody running with the guys. So, like, I feel like we locked in as a defense and really, like, everybody did their job. Hmm. Now, you know, I'm a huge, I'm going to put this here, this makes more sense, because, you know, I'm a you gotta huge You got to get a vase on there now. You got to get, you got to get You already, you, know, okay. <laughs> you already know, and I, and I hype you guys up, and you do the same in your locker room. Dustin yeah. Hopkins, crazy game. He gets the game ball, the whole works, and literally no one was more excited than you. And that's what it's up to Dustin Hopkins. Oh, yeah. Florida State is that garnet and gold. It's that, you know, everything. I just see how hard he works. And D-Hop, he's such a great teammate and a, such a great guy. So to be able to celebrate that moment 
with him, you know, and he wasn't even 100%. They would still be able to go out there and kick and not complain. You know, I just wanted to just show my happiness for him, you know, as his brother. Now, you don't just have kickers, though. You have love for everyone. Asante Samuel Jr., I remember he was uh, mic'd up in your game against the Texans, and you were hyped. You were so hyped for him. Created quite a buzz in the preseason. Cook scobbled up. They're going to lose yardage here. I've been making tacos all day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm proud of that. Yeah. I'm more proud of that than anything. You make making strong-ass tacos. It's your fourth year in the league now, which is sort of crazy. Up outside of getting the guys going, what is your role on this Chargers team? Just being a heartbeat that the team know know and want me to be, you know, and um, the team asks me to do a lot. They want me to be that leader. And, um, you know, I, I know everything that comes. In. So, you know, I just try to do my best day in and day out. Keep setting the standard, keep keep setting the example for the young guys and, um, you know, get as many wins as we can. Uh, let's go back to week two, my friend, because this is, I'm just going to say it, the most iconic play, in my opinion, of the season. Oh, yeah, so appreciate that. I don't know what's going to, I don't know what's going to be better. I don't know what's going to be better. It's this, it's the suplexing of Travis Kelsey. You basically <laughs> body slam him. Uh, take me through what this was like and how, how it felt. Uh, you know, I seen Mahomes scrambling around and Kelsey, he was just doing what he always do, you know, make finding grass and, you know, getting open. And I knew that, you know, I was only so close to the end zone, and I, I was like, man, I got to come up and make this tackle. I didn't see nobody, like, close to him, so I'm like, it's just me and him and the goal line. So, like, hey, I got to use everything I got in my power just to, you know, keep him out the end zone. And, you know, I, I connected with a good hit. And um, Where does the strength come from to do that, though? Is it adrenaline? What is that? I feel like naturally I'm strong, though. Uh, naturally, naturally I'm strong, but... I feel like I connected good and I was low enough and you know, the low man always wins, so. So you, I mean, you've had your battles with him and you're the only guy that I can think of that can sort of, you know, contain with, can, uh, contain him a bit. What is the key to dealing with Travis Kelsey? I mean, I can't just give you one key on how to contain him because he just like, he, I mean, he got a lot. Like he one of the greats of all time. Like he gonna go down in history as one of the greats. I mean, just so going against him is just a battle. You know, every time it's a battle, he constantly miss, mix, mixing it up. He's not running the route the same pace. And um, everyone knows when it comes to creating routes, like what he can do. You did this though, my friends. One of the greatest goats of all goats. It's crazy. Uh, just Does he talk out there when you guys have your battles? Yeah, he talked to me. So like, it's different. When I, when, I, when I be out there playing and stuff, like, you know, the, usually guys talk trash, but they don't really like talk trash to me. It's always like, you know, good conversation and, you know, just about ball, I guess. What do you mean you're out there talking about Game of Thrones? What do you mean it's good conversation? Not, they don't try to, they don't try to make me mad, I guess. I like, no one's yeah. just like out there just talking trash to me. It's just like good play or, hey man, good. This is always like good compliments. It's always, it's not like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but after that, you know, he talked about it on his podcast with his brother. He admitted that it was the craziest play. He got got all of that. So there's love there, right? Yeah, for sure. It's all love. It's always love anytime. It's, it's love every time. Okay, I have lots of love for your coach, Brandon Staley. Uh, and he's getting it from all sides for being too aggressive. So I'm going to give you the floor here. Why is going for it the right move? Let him know. Because the guy, first of all, the guy we have at quarterback, we believe in him. And the offense we have, the weapons around him, we believe in him. And as a defense and as a team, we know that, hey, if they don't get it, we got to have they back and go get a stop. And, you know, like it's preach. We practice it every day, every every week. So, like, we know our mindset. Like, we don't need to go out there and change how we are when we practice every day the way we are. So Now, are you saying that because it's true and you believe it? Or are you saying that because that's what you do as the king of Madden? Nah, nah, for sure. Nah, it's true. I really believe that. Like, we believe in Justin. And like I say, you know me, I'm going for it anyway. I want to be aggressive oh, anyway, no. too. So I'm an aggressive <laughs> player. And I, as a defender, I'm like, if they don't get it, hey, it gives me an opportunity, sudden change to go make a play. So, you know, we got to go out there anyway. Whether we punt it or not, we're going out there anyway as a defense. So Yeah, I've, so. Never, I've never played Madden, but I hear you're quite good. I know you <laughs> gave Jalen Ramsey all the smoke in college. And I know yeah, I, I, did, I, I did read. Smoke. I'm all right, Madden. Yeah, and you beat in Tyreek like crazy, like 52 to three in a charity game. Uh, you're obsessed with Madden. Would you rather get like a, a, a pass breakup on the field against Tyreek or beat him in Madden? 
a pass break on the field. That's making a play. The show cool. Okay? Can't come on. I, I, I don't love the game that much. I don't know how obsessed I, I love, you I are with that. I love the real game. The real game. Now, come on now. <laughs> Don't be that, man. <laughs> you have the Seahawks in Los Angeles this week. Yeah. And you have been watching tape, I imagine, on Geno Smith day in, day out. Yeah. Do you, what are you seeing? Let's start there. First of all, I got time to spend with Geno my rookie year. He was with us in 18 when we went 12 and 12 and 4 that year. Uh, he was our quarterback on the roster, him and Cardell. So just going to get some everyday scout team practice, just seeing them. You know, my rookie year coming in the league, he gave me great looks every day, like, in practice. So, you know, just knowing the person who is, traveling, playing with him. So, like, I, I know everything he can do. Like, I, I'm not surprised by any of it. If you look at his QBR, everything, like, I, I've seen him every day in practice since I was a rookie. So, you know, um, I'm already accustomed to what he's used to. What are, I mean, so you're not surprised that he sort of emerged? No, nah, no, nah, for sure. Because, like, he helped us get ready every week in practice as a defense in 18, in 18 when we was 12 and 4 that year. Uh, he, he was a good credit to us as a defense. I feel like he helped us. Him and Cardell Jones, they did a great job giving us looks all year. If you look at when he was in college and whenever his number's been called, he, he's always done his job. So I can, I can definitely see the success continuing for him because he works hard. He puts the time in. And, um, like I said, I got to spend time with him. I think he's going to throw you that ball. And that pass is intercepted. Derwin James goes up and gets it. Speaking into existence. Let's I go. am. I, I'm a big manifester. Let's go. I, can let's just go. See I it need happen. that. I need all that. Uh, you're you're always smiling, and I know that it's you know for camera, and sometimes it's it's. I, mean, I always think it's really remarkable with you and and Saquon Barkley actually is another person that sort of presents this to me. You missed so much time. Yeah. You're in your fourth year. You missed an entire season. Yet you have a smile on your face. So when you had to sit out in 2020, what did you learn about yourself as a man and as a player? That I really love ball. Like, because a lot of people say they love ball and like, but when you're having success and then things are not going your way, you really get to see how much you really love it. And you know, the days that I was battling adversity, getting better 1% every day, you know, it, it made me to who I am today. It made me a better person today. And uh, like I say, I wouldn't rather have it no other way. I'm always smiling, just keep going and working hard. Uh, last one for you. Uh, what should I ask? This Chargers team. I have the helmet. I'm always yeah. supporting. Does it feel like a different team this year? It definitely feel like a different team. I, I know we don't. I know we may not have all our guys out there, but I feel like the way we've been able to win these games, these last three games, I feel like it's helping us you know, that, that we're going to need in the season. You know, being able to win, you know, from coming back from 14-0, being able to win in overtime and being able to win all these different ways is just shaping us up to the team that we want to be later and in just, the season. And Justin Herbert, you've seen a bit of a difference in him. Not that he needs to change, but how has he grown from even just last year? I mean, if you look at what he's doing, I mean, he don't even have all his weapons out there and to still be able to, to go out there to do it without your starting center and your starting left tackle and your starting receiver. I mean, come on now, that speaks for itself. Go win another Super Bowl there for SoFi. You know, let's, let's sure, do it for, for sure. SoFi Stadium. Rams got one, y'all yeah. gotta get one. Yeah, for sure. I like the healthy respect for Geno, but get an interception. For sure. Right. I love the ambiance of the truck backing up. They kicked him out of the facility because Khalil Mack of all people, quiet Khalil Mack making so much noise, they told him to go outside. Loved him, loved him on Geno Smith. Healthy respect there. We'll see how it shakes out Sunday. Sam Munson coming up with some let's get PFF'd up. But now how about some you up? This is the text Conrad Company sends to people because he's single and out there on the prowl in LA, ladies. Be careful. But let's talk about this. These are guys you should pick up and get in your lineup to Watunga Vailoa. Conrad out here catching strays for no reason. I love you, Conrad. Uh, he's ranked 11th on Fantasy Pros. He's back. Shaky Steeler secondary. And I would get him in your fantasy lineup week seven. Tony Pollard, everybody, 26th on Fantasy Pros. He's been very boomer bust this year. It's true. Jerry Jones continues to try to make Zeke a thing, but I would trust him against the league worst Lions defense. You couldn't ask for a better gift in week seven with all the running back shakeups. Uh, so I'm going to give you another one. Why? Because I love you. Melvin Gordon. Ooh, people have been burned by Melvin Gordon. You might be hesitant. He was benched last week. He and Hackett have 
worked it out. They've talked, woo-saw, all of that. And I think the Broncos lean on him big time. Vote of confidence from Hackett to Melvin Gordon uh, against the Jets. Uh, Josh Palmer is a guy I like at the wide receiver spot for your daily fantasy needs over at FanDuel. Use the FanDuel app wherever you like to go. Uh, he's gotten 18 targets. That's a lot. We love volume. He is a volume king. And that's happened over the past two weeks. He leads all Charger receivers with nine grabs last week. We'll nod and love for Derwin James. Some synergy there. Get Josh Palmer in your lineup. And uh, I I'm in love with Hayden Hurst. I don't know what to say. I can't quit him. He's uh, all over my fantasy choices here. And he's been up and down week to week. But that means you have to play him in a good matchup. And that's what we got here. Kiddos, the Falcons have allowed the second most catches to the tight end spot. He knows the Falcons very well, as well as we all know. So I got you a tight end. I got your quarterback. I got your running back. What else do you want from me? You up? Get these week seven sleepers in your lineup. All right, we had Brandon Marshall who wanted to stay longer. And in my head, I was thinking, should we have him stay longer? Because he always wants to. And we have Mark Ingram on deck. So we want to save space for Ingram because I want to talk to him. But, but also, Ingram in the desert, long flight home to New Orleans, bad loss, probably sleeping. And I figured he didn't want to come on, but I would love to talk to him. We emailed him. Maybe he wakes up and joins us. No fault if he doesn't want to. But I got questions about the turnover. Their margin is minus 10, by far the worst in the league. So I want to talk to him about that. I want to talk to him about Dennis Allen. He loved Sean Payton. They talked when Sean Payton was on the show. But he has a lot of respect for Dennis Allen. He knows Dennis Allen. How do they handle this? What are the conversations happening in the locker room? What can they do to fix what happens so it doesn't happen again? So hopefully we get Mark Ingram. Uh, if not, totally understand. Let's go to Twitter for some questions that you guys have for me, which is absolutely terrifying. Uh, football enjoyer, would you rather, oh God, would you rather stick your hand in a deep fryer for five seconds? Ouch, I don't have a deep fryer. Uh, or rewatch both of last, oh, come on! You got a high scoring situation. We had 30 something points scored, 32 points scored yesterday. That must have been sent before last night's action. This is what you call a dummy block. Guys, this is something we have in case a guest doesn't show up. So that was a, an old tweet. All right. If you could eat only one form of potato, deep fryers, and now I'm hungry, uh, for the rest of your life. Oh, eat easy, a french fry. Uh, any kind of French fry, a curly fry, a steak fry, a, a, you know, a wedge, whatever. Yeah, French fries for life, I would eat. Oh, French fries, babe, French fries. Um, if you could be in the, oh God, if you could be in the head of any current NFL player on game day, who would it be? This is the toughest question I've been asked in a long time. I actually don't have an answer. Tom Brady would just be, I don't even know, just on to the next play, blah, blah, football jargon, blah, blah, blah. Wouldn't like that. Aaron Rodgers, I kind of have no interest. Conrad Company's in my ear saying Josh Allen. Josh Allen would be like a puppy. Josh Allen would be like, blah, 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 some like kid joke, something like a joke that's on the back of a Laffy Taffy. Josh Allen would be like for a good time. For a good time, I'd be in Josh Allen's head. Lamar Jackson would be really interesting too, I think, to be in his head. I don't know why all quarterbacks. All right, you know what time it is, Friday. Beer o'clock somewhere. Some country singer sings that. And we've got Sam Munson, not a country singer. Might be in Ireland. We'll see. Who knows? It's Friday. Very much looking forward to the games this weekend, week seven. Not before we get a little PFF action. This was big time news. Christian McCaffrey, I'm forever grateful for all the people who've helped make these past five. Has it been five and a half years? That's wild. It's been special for him. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Carolina, I will always love you, but I'm on my way to potentially win a Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo, Debo, and Kyle Shanahan and those Shanahanigans out there in the Bay Area. That's right. A deal for a second rounder and some other draft picks for Christian McCaffrey. So, Mr. Lynch, we see you, we salute you, we cheers you, and Kyle Shanahan as we bring in our PFF guru. Yes, he is the host of PFF's lead podcast and everything over there. And, uh, you know, Sam Munson, I, I got to be honest with you. I sat in the control room yesterday and I go, I have a serious question. I want no one to yell at me. Like, does Sam live in Ireland? Is that where he's com coming to us from? So tell me, where you're in the middle of Cincinnati, as I understand it. Yeah, he used to live in Ireland, and then Chris Collinsworth bought PFF, relocated the whole uh, the whole shebang over to Cincinnati. So that's where I am now. Are you? Uh, you're clearly, by the looks of your garb, not happy about that move. <laughs> you're not exactly wearing <laughs> Grater's Grater's ice cream T-shirts. 
Well, now that my accent, you know, transitions further and further away from Ireland, I have to compensate by wearing more and more Irish stuff. Well, we love it. What's the kit today? Is that right, kit? I don't know. Nailed it. Just. Just the, uh, the vintage Ireland jersey, the rugby jersey. It's badass. I like that. Okay, tell me what we're drinking and tell me what you think about Christian McCaffrey. I, I went back to the Guinness. I, I kept it simple okay. this week, you know. It was what was um, in the fridge. I understand. I'm drinking something called Golden Road Oktoberfest. It's cute and ironic that L.A. thinks it knows anything about October or fall or Oktoberfest. But, hey, let's give it a shot. Cheers to you, my friend. McCaffrey, go. Me too. Yeah, I love the combination of Christian McCaffrey and Kyle Shanahan's offense. Obviously, it's PFF, we're analytics. I'm contractually obliged to hate the compensation and how much they gave up and the costs and all that kind of stuff. Right. But put that to the side for a minute and just think of what Christian McCaffrey within this offense can be. He's an incredible running back, but he's also an incredible receiver. And the 49ers now have a running back that can split out and play wide receiver. And they have a wide receiver that can go into the backfield and play running back, and they can interchange those guys constantly. That's a unique matchup problem for any defense in the NFL. A second, third, and fourth round pick. Uh, not a first rounder for him, of course. And the big thing that you know PFF doesn't have to tell me is that the health is going to have all the difference in Christian McCaffrey as he's missed so many games with injury. So praying he can stay healthy uh, throughout the season. All right, time to get PFF'd up with my guy, Sam Munson, who I I don't hear an accent at all. So very, you're a man of mystery, but the yeah. number is 10. I'm going to say 10 is the amount of pounds I will gain by the end of the season if we keep doing the segment on Friday. A uh, price well worth paying, I think. 10% is the percentage of Denver Broncos drives that end in a touchdown this season, which is the lowest percentage in the NFL and really, you know, emblematic of all the struggles that we're seeing right now with Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett's offense and just everything that's going on with the Broncos on offense. I want to say the Broncos red zone percentage, just to point out to add insult to injury here, almost just as bad scoring touchdowns on just 20% of their red zone opportunities. No one else to put that into context here, I'm a numbers girl, trying to be. No one else below 33%. They take on the Jets this weekend. All right, next, the producers are telling me the number is 413. Let me guess here. Uh, I'm going to say 413 is the amount of times that I'll most likely fail my written driver's test in the state of California. Got a written driver's test? Come on, those are, those are gimmies. Those are layups. you got to be able to pass those. 413 is the number of rushing yards after contact Whoa! that Saquon Barkley has this season. Like, he is playing at the best level we've ever seen Saquon. He's looking like the superstar that he was when he came into the league, and he's doing that behind a Giants offensive line that isn't good right now. Well, say, yeah, he's amazing. Second in the league in rushing overall. I can't, you know, you're saying, in my head I'm thinking comeback player. The fact that you just said it's the best he's ever looked makes me so happy. He has 616 yards, and those are just 33 behind Nick Chubb for the league lead. So, you know, he's got the Jags, and I, I have a feeling he's going to keep it going. Finally, the number 40. Uh, I'm going to have to have to say it's the number of times I'm, I have rebought and will rebuy the bag of Reese's peanut butter cups that I've chosen to give out for Halloween because I keep eating them and I have 10 days to go. Yeah, it's a tough one. Keeping keeping away from the food mm -hmm. before the kids get to it. Number of pressures that the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line has given up this season. Okay. We are looking at the best offensive line in the NFL every week. I think so far they've been number one in PFF's offensive line rankings. They are the bedrock behind all of this offensive success. They're able to be so good running the ball, passing the ball, all because that line has no weaknesses whatsoever unless injury strikes. Were they in, you know, the Lane Johnson, is that a concern for you guys over there at PFF? And then was when your preseason rankings, when it came to offensive lines, they were top three, top five, I remember? Yeah. Yeah, they were definitely one of the best lines coming into the league. But as long as that starting five stays healthy, I think they're the best line out there. Lane Johnson, when they go into the bench, it's tougher. Um, but he got a concussion. They've got a, a well-timed bye week. I think they're going to be good there. And they'll, they'll keep that starting five intact. And Philly is on a bye this weekend, getting rest. I like the week seven bye. They're built, they're built down the stretch. I don't know who's stopping them unless it's the Niners with Christian McCaffrey. 
All right, Sam Munson with PFF. We appreciate you. Love having you on the show. You can catch all of Sam's work on PFF.com and the new PFF app. We didn't do much beer drinking, but I've got about seven minutes to do it. We appreciate you, my Guinness drinking friend, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Cool? Um, you too. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Bye, so the ghost of Sam Munson. All right, coming up, no Mark Ingram. No, if anybody can find, everybody tweet at Mark Ingram. Where are you? You're supposed to be on the Up and Adam show. We'll be back with some K-Makers. Where's the camera? Big dog! What he said. That's a hell of a I love the way that this group responded this week. I thought it translated into a good performance. You're pretty tough too, 17. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Chelsea, two, hey, two of them things? Chelsea, two of them things? <laughs> Okay, let's do it, baby. Come on. And, and, and again. <laughs> I love the visceral emotion from that Giants locker room. I need more coaches dancing in week seven. Coaches dancing in the locker room. It needs to be more of a thing. It isn't as much. All right, it's time for some K-Makers. FanDuel has got you covered. These are some guys who may or may not and likely may get into the end zone in week seven. I've got you covered. I'm going to go all running back edition. What? Yes, Aaron Jones. Hey, Packers! Aaron Jones! Listen, 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 listen. He only has two touchdowns all season. One rushing, one receiving, but I think the Packers are going to get back to simplifying things. Have you heard that before? The Packers want to simplify things. What does that mean? Give the ball to Aaron Jones, please. Give it to him against the Commanders. They are 25th ranked rush defense, and so you got to get him in your lineup. Josh Jacobs, the Raiders, coming into this week's game against the Texans. They're coming off a bye. We like that. Jacobs has gotten 59 touches and scored three touchdowns over his last two. Houston has allowed the fourth most touchdowns to running backs this year. I feel good about that one. Last but not least, Patriots. Oh, it's icy to call the Patriots running back in that mess, that migraine headache, needs excedrin uh, of a backfield that Belichick likes to run out there. But Ramondre scored two touchdowns last week against the Browns. This week, it's pitiful Chicago, and they've allowed five rushing touchdowns. Great. Over their last five games. So it just seems to make sense. Ramondre Stevenson, Josh Jacobs, and Aaron Jones to score touchdowns. Uh, I was over last week on my K-Makers. I appreciate the production staff for not building a full screen to show the people that I didn't even get you one K-Maker touchdown score, but that is uh, where we are here. Um, I'm going to go study for my driving test. If anybody has any, you know, what a, my, my makeup artist today told me she has a cheat sheet from the California DMV that she's going to give me. Like when you write on your TI-89 calculator when you're trying to pass the SATs. Oh, did I, it was just me? Okay, bye. <laughs>